z equals x plus i y is a complex number represented in the argand diagram by the point p, and o is the origin, then the distance op is called the modulus of z. It's denoted by z inside two vertical lines. Sometimes it's denoted by small r. So if we plot the point z in the argand diagram, we go across x and up y to the point p. Then the distance OP is just the length of the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle, and that is the modulus of Z. The modulus is then given by the formula. The modulus of Z is the square root of X squared plus Y squared. That's given by Pythagoras' theorem. So we have the modulus of Z is the square root of the sum of the squares of the real part and the imaginary part. The plural of modulus is moduli. As an example, we have the modulus of the complex number 2 plus 3i is the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared, which is the square root of 13. And that's also that the modulus is a non-negative real number. As another example, we'll find the modulus of complex number z, which is minus 4 minus 5i. Well, the modulus of z will be the modulus of minus 4 minus 5i, and that will be the square root of minus 4 all squared plus minus 5 all squared, which is the square root of 16 plus 25, which is the square root of 41. Here's an exercise for you. Find the modulus of the complex number z, which is equal to a half minus root 3 on 2i. So stop the video now, take out the pen and the paper, have a go at uh, working out that uh, modulus. Well, we'll end up with the square root of all of a half all squared plus minus root 3 on 2 all squared. And don't forget the minus sign in, in there with the root 3 on 2. That's uh, important there. Uh, that comes out to be the square root of a quarter plus 3 quarters. That's the square root of 1 which is equal to 1. We'll now consider the argument of a complex number. Again, suppose P is the point representing the complex number Z, which is X plus IY. Then the angle between the positive real axis and the interval OP is called the argument of Z. It's written arg Z, Z in the brackets. In the diagram below, that particular angle is theta, and so the argument of Z is theta. Angle theta may be measured by going around more than one revolution in the anti-clockwise, which is the positive direction. Hence, the argument could be theta, and on the next revolution, theta plus 2 pi, and another revolution, theta plus 4 pi, and so on. The angle theta may also be measured by going around more than one revolution in the clockwise or negative direction. Measured in this way, the argument is minus 2 pi plus theta, minus 4 pi plus theta, and so on. In this way, the argument of z can take an infinite number of values. So that we all know which value of the argument we're talking about, we define what is called the principal argument of the complex number z. It's written arg z, but with a capital A. The principal argument of the complex number z is the value of theta such that minus pi is less than theta is less than equal to pi. So this tells us that the principal argument is between minus pi and pi, but it cannot be equal to minus pi, but it can be equal to pi. Now, most of the time we usually refer to the principal argument as just the argument. This means that if the point P representing the complex number Z lies in the first or second quadrant, the argument is positive. But if the point lies in the third or the fourth quadrant, the argument is negative. Because the value of the principal argument depends on the quadrant in which the uh, complex number lies, I'll give an example in each of the four quadrants. Look at them very carefully. If the point P representing the complex number Z lies in the first quadrant, the principal argument is given by the positive acute angle theta. So here, the argument of Z is theta. As an example of this, let's suppose that the point P, which represents the complex number Z, lies in the first quadrant. 
and we'll suppose that the angle between the positive real axis and the interval OP is 3 pi on 8. Then the argument is positive and it's measured in the anticlockwise direction. So the argument of this complex number Z is positive 3 pi on 8. In other words, 3 pi on 8. If the point P representing the complex number Z lies in the second quadrant, the principal argument is the positive obtuse angle theta. So here, the argument of Z is theta. Now suppose that the point P, which represents the complex number Z, lies in the second quadrant. And we'll also suppose that the angle between the negative real axis and the interval OP is pi on 4. Then, the obtuse angle measured from the positive real axis around in the anticlockwise sense will be 3 pi on 4. And because the point P is in the second quadrant, the argument is positive. And so in this case, for this particular complex number Z, the argument of Z will be positive 3 pi on 4, or just 3 pi on 4. The point P representing Z lies in the third quadrant. The principal argument is the negative obtuse angle theta. So here, the argument of Z would be minus theta. As an example of this, we'll suppose that point P, which represents the complex number Z, lies in the third quadrant. And we'll also suppose that the angle between the negative real axis and the hypotenuse of the triangle is pi on 6. Then the obtuse angle measured from the positive real axis around to the hypotenuse is 5 pi on 6. But because the point P is in the third quadrant, the argument of Z will be negative. So the argument of this complex number Z will be minus 5 pi on 6. If the point P representing Z lies in the fourth quadrant, the principal argument is the negative acute angle theta. So here, the argument of Z would be minus theta. As an example of this case, we'll consider a uh, point P representing complex number Z lying in the fourth quadrant, and we'll also assume that the angle between the positive real axis and the interval OP is pi on 5. Now, because the point P is in the fourth quadrant, we know that the argument is negative. Hence, the argument of this particular Z will be minus pi on 5. Here's a quick exercise for you. What is the argument of the complex number Z in this argand diagram? The questions to ask yourself are, in which quadrant does Z lie, and what is the sign of the argument in that quadrant? Answer, the third quadrant where the argument is negative. The next question is, in which direction is the required angle measured? Answer, in the clockwise direction. The next question is, what is the size of the required angle? And the answer will be pi minus 2 pi on 7, which is 5 pi on 7. Then you put these all together to give the answer, argument of z is minus 5 pi on 7. Normally, I'd give some examples about how to find the argument of a complex number, but we'll leave that for the next lecture. That will avoid a lot of repetition. There is one complex number which we regard as not having an argument at all. Can you guess which one it is? I hope you enjoyed lecture two, and if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe to our video. Now, in lecture three, I'll show you how to use the uh, modulus and the argument to write the complex number in a special form called polar form. And once we can do that, we can do lots of things with complex numbers, one of which is to find powers of complex numbers. So things are getting pretty interesting. Don't miss lecture three. I'll just remind you that at my website at Solve and Evolve, we have practice assignments and a final exam that you can test yourself on this uh, material that you've learned. Uh, we do charge uh, a small amount to uh, register. 
Uh, it's about the cost of a fresh cheese pizza. Uh, I think it's a pretty good deal. So I hope to see you there soon. Just incidentally before I go, the answer to that other question about what um, complex number does not have an argument, well, it's zero.